I arrived in Tokyo after a long flight, exhausted and in need of a place to rest my head. As I wandered through the busy streets, I stumbled upon a capsule hotel. If you haven't heard of them before, they're basically a type of budget accommodation popular in Japan where you sleep in a tight, coffin-like pod. It's obviously not the most comfortable way to sleep, but I was intrigued by the concept and so decided to give it a try. As I walked through the doors of the hotel, the smell of cleaning products and the sound of muffled chatter filled the air. The receptionist, dressed in a traditional Japanese kimono, greeted me with a polite bow and led me to my pod. It was small and compact, with just enough space for me to lie down and sleep. The walls were made of plastic and the roof was a soft cushion that was pretty much moulded to my body. But the bedding was surprisingly comfortable and the blanket was thick and warm. Nevertheless, despite my exhaustion, I couldn't ignore the feeling of being trapped. The pod genuinely felt like a coffin, suffocating and claustrophobic. I tried to calm myself down and just get some rest, but I knew it was going to be difficult. But what made things even worse was that as the night went on, I started to hear strange noises coming from outside my pod. It sounded like footsteps and whispering, but when I opened the curtain to look outside, there was no one there. I just laid back down in my pod, and after an hour or so, my exhaustion eventually took over, and I drifted off to sleep. It wasn't until the next night, however, as I climbed into my bed, I noticed a red light next to the curtain. At first, I thought it was some sort of decoration, but as the night went on, the light persisted. I started to feel uneasy and paranoid, and so I reported the red light to the hotel staff. They assured me that it must have been a mistake and that they would take care of it, but when I crawled back into my pod that night, the red light was still there. I observed it closer and compared the light to the camera on my phone, and I was horrified to see that it was almost an identical match. I felt a chill run down my spine as I realised that someone had put a camera in my pod. I knew I needed to do something, but I was too scared to move. The thought of confronting whoever was watching me was terrifying, and I didn't know what they were capable of. But as I stared down the camera, suddenly the red light went off. I waited for it to turn back on, but it never did. I just laid there in the silence, wondering who was watching me and what they were doing with the footage. The very next day, I checked out of the hotel and went straight to the police. They took my statement and promised to investigate, but I never heard anything back. To this day, the thought of someone recording me while I slept still plays on my mind, and I warn everyone that I know to never stay in a capsule hotel, as you never know who might be watching. I was on a work trip with my colleagues and we were all staying at a hotel in a new city. It was a beautiful hotel with marble floors and chandeliers that sparkled in the light. I was excited to be there but also a little bit nervous as I was away from my husband for the first time in a while and wasn't looking forward to staying alone in my room. Well, on the second night of our stay, we decided to go down to the hotel bar for a few drinks after work. It was a lively scene with people laughing and chatting over cocktails. I was having a good time until I noticed a man staring at me from across the room. He was tall, with dark hair and piercing eyes that seemed to follow my every move. I tried to ignore him and focus on my friends, but eventually, he approached me. I tried to explain I was happily married, but he persisted anyway, claiming that he was also married and it could be our little secret. I was repulsed, and being slightly drunk at this point, I think I insulted him and demanded that he leave me alone. 
which seemed to make him angry. The look on his face quickly changed to a menacing scowl, and he slowly backed away from me, without breaking eye contact. Luckily, he didn't speak to me for the rest of the night, but I was still left with a feeling of unease from the way that he'd looked at me. Anyway, fast forward to later that night. I was getting ready for bed when I suddenly heard a knock at the door. I assumed it was room service, so I opened the door without thinking. But instead of a tray of food, I was met with the same man from the bar, standing in front of me with a predatory look in his eyes. He attempted to make small talk with me, but I could tell he was only interested in one thing, so I again declined his advances and slammed the door in his face. But this was clearly a huge mistake as in the middle of the night, as I was just starting to fall asleep. I was abruptly jolted awake by the sound of my doorknob rattling. It was as if someone was trying to pick the lock. I felt my heart pounding in my chest as I slowly got out of bed, trying not to make any noise. As I approached the door, the rattling sound grew louder, and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up, as I realised that the man from the bar must be trying to break into my room. My hands were shaking as I frantically tried to find something to defend myself with, but that's when the lock suddenly clicked and the door began to slowly open. I could see the silhouette of a man on the other side, and I knew that I had to act fast. I grabbed the lamp from my bedside table, and swung it at the intruder with all of my strength. The lamp shattered against his head, and he stumbled backwards, dazed and disoriented. I quickly shut the door and locked it, and immediately called the hotel front desk to inform them of what had just happened. The rest of the night was a blur of fear and adrenaline. I didn't sleep a wink, instead spending the entire night staring at the door, listening for any signs of the man returning. And then the next morning, I followed up with the hotel staff, and they assured me that they were still investigating. But to this day, I have absolutely no idea whether or not they found him. But from that day on, I always make sure to take extra precautions when staying in hotels. I never open the door without checking the peephole, and I always make sure to keep something nearby that I could use to defend myself. But regardless of how much I prepare... I know I will never be completely comfortable staying in a hotel ever again. As soon as I arrived at the Airbnb, I felt like something was wrong. I didn't think much of it at the time though, because I was just happy to be there, ready to explore the city and have a good time. The apartment itself was cosy and comfortable with bright colours and plenty of natural light. It was located in a bustling part of town, with cafes, restaurants and shops lining the streets. It was perfect for someone like me, who loved to explore new places and soak in the culture. But there was one thing that I didn't anticipate. The neighbour. At first I thought it was just the noise. The neighbour would bang on the wall whenever I played music or had friends over. It was annoying, but I figured they were just being grouchy. It wasn't until a few nights in that I realised it was something more sinister. One night I was jolted awake by a loud banging, this time on the door. I stumbled out of bed, heart racing, and peered through the peephole. There was no one there, but I could hear someone shuffling around outside. I tried to ignore it and went back to bed, but the banging started again but louder this time. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. I finally worked up the courage to confront the neighbour, but as soon as I opened the door, he launched into a tirade of insults and threats. He hated that different guests stayed in the apartment all the time, causing noise and disturbance, but he was clearly especially angry with me, for reasons I just couldn't understand. The situation escalated quickly, the neighbour would bang on the door at all hours of the night, 
shouting and screaming until I was too terrified to leave my room. Sometimes he would even slide creepy notes under the door, or leave bizarre objects outside my doorstep. I tried to talk to the host about it, but they just shrugged and told me that the neighbour was a bit of a character. They said he had always been like this, and that I shouldn't take it personally. But it was personal. It was a constant, terrifying intrusion into my personal space. I felt like I was being watched and listened to all the time like someone was waiting for me to let my guard down. I finally decided that I'd had enough. I packed my bags and left the apartment, feeling like a prisoner who had finally been set free. But the experience still left a deep scar on me, all because of that crazy neighbour who couldn't stand the noise of different guests. From that moment on, I've always been careful when booking an Airbnb. But sometimes, even with all of the research and reading through countless reviews, you never truly know where you're going to be staying. And more importantly, who's going to be there. I had always been fascinated by the history and architecture of Europe, so when I decided to backpack through the continent, I knew I wanted to stay in hostels to immerse myself in the local culture while saving money. I booked a room in a historic building in a small town in Eastern Europe, excited to experience the local sights and sounds. The hostel was located in a beautiful old building, with winding staircases and creaky wooden floors. The common room was cosy, with mismatched armchairs and a roaring fire. I was excited to meet my fellow travellers and explore the town. But as soon as I entered my room, I knew that there was something off. It was cramped and dimly lit, with a single window that overlooked an alleyway. The bed was hard and lumpy, with scratchy sheets and a thin blanket. But despite my negative feelings, I tried to ignore my discomfort and settled in for the night, eager to explore the town in the morning. But the next day, I woke up to find that some of my belongings were missing. At first it was just a pair of earrings and a book, but then my money started disappearing too, and I realised that someone must be stealing from me. I reported the theft to the hostel staff, but they were dismissive and very unhelpful. They just told me that theft was common in the area and that I should keep my belongings close at all times. I felt frustrated and angry, but I tried to be more careful with my things. But then... Things started to get even worse. I would now wake up in the middle of the night to find that someone had gone through my bags, rifling through my clothes and personal items. I felt violated and vulnerable, wondering who was going through my things and why. I mean, they weren't even trying to hide it anymore. And that's when I woke up one night to find a man standing at the foot of my bed. He was tall and lean, with greasy hair and dark circles under his eyes. He just stood there, staring at me with a blank expression. I froze, unable to scream, and he just watched me. Until finally, he turned and walked out of the room, leaving me shaking and terrified. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night, wondering who he was and what he wanted from me. I reported the incident to the hostel staff, but they once again just shrugged it off. They told me that it was probably just another traveller who had gotten lost and wandered into the wrong room. But I knew that wasn't true. It couldn't be as simple as that. I started to feel paranoid and afraid, wondering who was watching me, and who was stealing from me. I couldn't trust anyone, not even my fellow travellers. So I decided to cut my trip short and leave the hostel, eager to now get away from the creepy atmosphere and the sense of danger that had surrounded me. As I left the hostel and walked out into the bright sunlight of the town, I realised that I had been naive to think that travelling was always a safe and wonderful adventure. I thought to myself that next time I will make sure to be more cautious in the future. I reminded myself, that I will never stay in a hostel, ever again.
Now, before I get into the details of this story, I first need to explain why I even decided to put myself through this hellish experience in the first place. I was exhausted. The constant noise, demands and needs of my two young children had seriously left me drained. My parents had offered to take them for a few days and I jumped at the opportunity to get some rest. They suggested that I stay in a quaint little British cottage that they had heard about. It sounded perfect, exactly what I needed. A weekend of peace and quiet to recharge my batteries. Well, the day finally came, and as I drove down the winding country roads, I couldn't help but feel a sense of peace wash over me. The scenery was breathtaking, and the air was fresh and crisp. It was as if the world had stopped spinning and everything was in slow motion. As I pulled up to the cottage, I noticed how charming it was. The outside was covered in ivy and there was a lovely garden out front. It was honestly the picture-perfect British cottage, just as my parents had described it. But nonetheless, something suddenly felt off. There was an eerie silence surrounding the cottage. But I was tired and anxious, so I just tried to shake off the feeling, thinking it was just my imagination getting the better of me. And to be fair, as I entered the cottage, I couldn't help but notice how old-fashioned and charming it was. But once again, that feeling of unease crept up on me. I tried to put it out of my mind and decided to explore the cottage. But as I walked around, I noticed that some of the doors were locked. I couldn't help but wonder, why would anyone need to lock a door in such a peaceful place? Well, nightfall came quickly, and I found myself unable to sleep. The feeling of unease had only grown stronger, so I tossed and turned, trying to ignore it, but it was almost impossible. And that's when I heard it. Footsteps, slow and deliberate. I sat up, listening intently and the footsteps stopped, and there was a sudden silence. It was as if the world was holding its breath, and that's when I heard a faint whisper. I couldn't make out the words, but it sounded like it was coming from right outside my door. I was paralysed with fear. Every nerve in my body was on edge, and the whispering grew louder, and I could hear the footsteps were now approaching my door. I held my breath, waiting for whoever was outside to make another move, when suddenly there was a knock at my door. I tried to speak, but my voice was stuck in my throat. My heart was pounding, and that's when I heard the doorknob start to turn. The door slowly creaked open, and there stood a figure in the darkness. It was a man, tall and thin, but when I looked to his face, the only thing I noticed was a twisted grin. He stepped forward, and I could smell his foul breath. Hello, he said in a low voice. I couldn't help but notice you were all alone. I screamed, my heart racing as I scrambled out of bed. The man laughed and backed away, disappearing into the darkness. The rest of the night was a blur. I was huddled in a corner, clutching a blanket, praying that the man wouldn't come back. But I could still feel his presence, lurking in the shadows. After a little while, I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination. I mean, maybe I had fallen asleep and it was all just some sort of nightmare. But as I walked around the cottage, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. The atmosphere felt heavy and oppressive, and the air was thick with an unexplainable energy. But I was going to be in this cottage for a few days, so I decided to try and focus on the main task at hand, which after all, was relaxing. So I settled into the cosy living room with a cup of tea and a book, but every time I looked up, I felt like there was someone standing there, just out of sight. Well, the rest of the day carried on like this, moments of unease, where I just knew that something wasn't right. And that night was possibly the worst. 
Again, I couldn't sleep and kept hearing strange noises coming from the old wooden floors. It did sound like footsteps, but when I got up to investigate, there was no one there. So I tried to rationalise it as just the old cottage settling. But I knew, deep down, that something wasn't right. As the night wore on, I eventually fell asleep. But then, I was suddenly woken up in my bed to the feeling of someone breathing on my neck. I jolted upright, but there was no one there. I turned on the bedside lamp and saw a faint, misty figure disappearing through the wall. I was so scared that I couldn't move and I could feel my heart racing in my chest. I just lied awake, but I never saw anything again for the rest of the night. And then, the final night was the worst of all. I was lying in bed trying to get some rest when I heard a faint whispering coming from the corner of the room. It was a low, sinister voice, and I couldn't make out what it was saying. And then suddenly, the room grew cold, and I felt the presence of something malevolent. I could feel eyes watching me, and I knew that I wasn't alone in the room. I bolted upright, ready to flee, but the door wouldn't budge. It was as if someone, or something, was holding it shut. And that's when I turned around, and for the first time, saw a ghostly figure standing right in front of me. But it was the outline of a woman, dressed in a long white dress. Her eyes were empty and soulless, and I could feel her hatred emanating from her body, like a thick fog. I felt truly trapped, like I was being suffocated by an invisible force. And then, suddenly, the figure disappeared, and the door creaked open. I stumbled out into the hallway, gasping for breath and shaking with fear, and I immediately packed my bags and left the cottage, never speaking about what happened to anyone. Looking back, I'm pretty sure that that cottage was haunted by something, and there is absolutely no way that I will ever go back there again. I had been driving for hours, my eyes heavy with exhaustion. The open road stretched out before me, endless and dark. I had been planning to make it all the way to my family's house in one go, but my body was screaming for rest, and that's when I saw the sign for the motel. It was a dingy looking place with faded neon lights and a parking lot that was nearly empty but it was the only option for miles around, and I was desperate for some sleep. I pulled into the lot and made my way to the front desk. The motel was run by an old couple, both of them with stooped shoulders and tired eyes. They looked like they had been running the place for what seemed like decades, and they had a certain air of wariness about them. But to their credit, they were friendly enough, and they handed me a key with a small smile. As I made my way down the dimly lit hallway, I couldn't help but feel like I was walking into a horror movie. I mean, the walls were a sickly shade of yellow, and the carpet was threadbare and stained. Also, there were strange noises coming from the other rooms, like someone was moving furniture or slamming doors in the middle of the night. When I finally reached my room, I was relieved to find that it was at least somewhat clean, but I was so tired that I didn't even bother to unpack. I just collapsed onto the bed and closed my eyes. But for some reason, sleep didn't come too easily. The room was quiet, it was too still, and it was like there was something lurking just beyond the door. And that's when the scratching started. At first I thought it was just my imagination, but then it grew louder and more insistent. It sounded like someone was trying to claw their way into the room. I got up and peered through the peephole, but to my surprise, there was nothing out there. But then, I noticed something even stranger. A silhouette of a man standing just in the corner of the peephole view. 
At this moment, I really started to panic. His face was obscured by shadows, and he didn't knock or say anything. He just stood there. I tried to tell myself it was just a guest who was lost or confused, but something about the way he stood there, so still and silent, made me think that he was up to something. Well, I spent the rest of the night huddled in a corner of my room, my eyes fixed on the door. I didn't sleep at all, and by the time the sun started to rise, I was a jittery mess. When I went to check out, the old couple at the front desk didn't seem to notice anything wrong. They smiled at me and asked how my stay was, as if they had no idea what had happened in their own motel. But I knew better. I knew that there was something deeply wrong with that place, something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. Anyway, I got into my car and I drove away as fast as I possibly could. But even as I put distance between myself and the motel, I knew that this experience was something that was going to stay with me for a very long time. As we walked up to the house, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. The driveway was overgrown with weeds and the house looked like it hadn't been maintained in years. I turned to my friend and whispered, Are you sure this is the right place? She pulled out her phone and checked the address. Yep, yeah, this is it, she said, looking up at the house with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. We knocked on the door and after a few moments it creaked open to reveal the landlord. He had a thin smile plastered on his face, and I couldn't help but feel that there was something about him that was just wrong. He led us inside, and as he showed us around the house, I noticed that he seemed to be in no hurry to leave. He lingered in each room, pointing out various features and chatting away as if he was an old friend. He finally led us up to the attic, where our room was located. The staircase was narrow and steep, and the ceiling was covered with dust and cobwebs. When we reached the top, the landlord handed us a key and gestured towards the door. Well, this is it, he said with a smile, before turning and walking back down the stairs. As we entered the room, I couldn't help but notice how musty it smelled. The bed looked old and lumpy, and the sheets were yellowed with age. I knew that this wasn't going to be the luxurious getaway that we had hoped for, but I tried to put on a brave face for my friend's sake. That night, as I laid in bed, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something watching me. I tossed and turned, trying to ignore the strange sounds that echoed through the attic. Every creak and groan of the old house made my heart race with fear. And then, in the middle of the night, I was jolted awake by the sound of footsteps in the room. I sat up in bed, and I saw the landlord standing at the foot of the bed with a creepy smile on his face. Um, what are you doing here? I demanded, my voice shaking. Oh, I was just checking in on you girls, he replied, his smile never faltering. My friend stirred in her sleep, and the landlord finally left the room closing the door behind him. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night, and in the morning, I demanded that we pack our bags and leave as quickly as possible. After telling my friend what happened, she agreed, and as we walked down the stairs and out of the house, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. We had made it out unscathed, but the memory of that night would haunt me for years to come. To be honest, looking back on it now, I realise how lucky we were to have escaped with our lives. I'll never forget that creepy smile, and I know I'll never use Airbnb again. Not after that terrifying experience. Believe me when I tell you, I had always been incredibly sceptical of ghost stories, but after my experience at this hotel a few years ago, Everything changed. 
It was supposed to be a relaxing vacation away from the stresses of my job, but what I experienced was far from relaxing. As soon as I checked into that hotel, I had a strange feeling that I couldn't shake off. The lobby was dimly lit and the air was heavy with the musty scent of old furniture. But nevertheless, I tried to brush it off, thinking it was just my imagination running wild, and at the end of the day, it was a place to sleep. When I got to my room, I was relieved to find that it was spacious and well-appointed. I kicked off my shoes and flopped onto the bed, ready to catch up on some much-needed sleep. But as soon as I closed my eyes, I felt a strange presence in the room. Again, I thought it was just my imagination, but then I saw it, a ghostly figure sitting at the end of my bed. I could barely make out its features, but I could feel its gaze on me, and it sent shivers down my spine. I sat up and rubbed my eyes, thinking I must have just been seeing things, but when I looked again, the ghost was still there, staring at me with an intense, unblinking stare. In my mind, I wanted to run away and scream, but my voice was caught in my throat and I couldn't move. I felt like I was in a trance, unable to break free, and I just couldn't look away from the ghost's penetrating gaze. Well, after a short while, the ghost suddenly disappeared, and I was left alone in the room. I was able to move again, and I tried to rationalise what had just happened, telling myself that it was just a hallucination brought on by exhaustion. I had heard stories about night terrors, where you see figures at the end of your bed, but it's nothing more than just a nightmare. But after I went back to sleep, I remember having a vivid dream about that ghost, but this time it was a woman dressed in an old-fashioned gown, with long flowing hair and a sad expression on her face. She didn't speak to me, but I could feel her sorrow and pain just from the way that she looked. Well, the next day, I asked the hotel staff if anyone had ever reported seeing any ghostly apparitions in the hotel. At first, they looked at me strangely, but eventually, one of them admitted that there had been rumours of a ghost haunting the hotel. Apparently, the ghost was that of a woman who had died many years ago, but no one knew how she had died, and her spirit was said to linger in the hotel, searching for something that she had lost. Well, after hearing this, I couldn't wait to get out of that hotel, but I was stuck there for another night. I thought about just leaving anyway, but I thought at the very least this would be a cool experience to tell my friends, so I just tried to distract myself with movies and books. Eventually, when I finally fell asleep, I had another dream about that ghost, but this time, she was crying. The sound she made was horrific, and it actually woke me up. I immediately checked out of the hotel and never looked back. To this day, I have never stayed in a hotel again without thoroughly researching its history and any potential paranormal activity. So the one thing that I've learnt from this experience is to keep an open mind, as sometimes you never know what's truly out there. Thank you for watching. And if you prefer the longer format videos, please let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to subscribe for more scary stories.